guys, Zuljin here. Welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. Let's go ahead and get Dana powered up here, shall we? Power on. There she is. Good. Power system is now online. Good evening, Dana. I guess it's uh, it's a little dark. We should probably sleep to get this day started. So I was going to go and finish up the project that we were working on last episode which was the if I can get in my bed and make this sleep happen I was going to get the tank finished project and uh, try to get XB on the line hey Z what's up Dana I hate to spoil the fun but XB called and said something about fishy disappearing from my Devin's tank he won't be able to make it today for oh, our tank project Oh, that stinks well I guess I could work on something different, but I really wanted to install the tank. Oh well, I'd rather XP be a part of it than not. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is, uh, I don't know what's up with that um, fishy being gone from the tank either. I don't know if it was a despawn or a break, but I have some plans for Hermit Thrills that I've been kind of thinking about. And I wanted to, uh, there was a few projects that I was trying to evaluate. Uh, one of my Patreons... Um, named <laughs> i always I always josh him and call him akr boss uh acker boss but uh he goes by akr boss and he did this cool rendition of crossy road or like the old frogger game and i was thinking about implementing that but i can't quite get it the way i would like it to work um but i have been thinking about something else as well i've been watching some old yogs cast videos um and a while back i saw something that they were playing around with golf and I thought the idea to make like a mini golf course would be awesome. Uh, actually, let's take the boat launcher. Um, so I've gathered up a little bit of materials and picked out a little spot. It is going to be relatively large. It's going to be like a continuing build, something that I keep adding to. And it's going to kind of wrap around the surrounding area of Hermit Thrills because I didn't want to just put it all over everybody's stuff. They have marked out a few plots there, uh, but I didn't know if it would be centralized or not. So that was one of the things. Let's see. I do need some more boats here. I should have a few more boats. I'll have to stop and make some uh, sooner or later. There we go. We should just be able to take the boat launcher down. And let's see. Three, two, one, go! Woo! <laughs> I always love jumping. The first thing in the episode to do is jump from a ridiculous height in Amplified just to make me remember how much I really like Amplified. This stream is a little too narrow. It kind of adds an element of danger. Um, but what I wanted to do here is, like, right on the side of Jello Spleef, if I take this area up and just look well, let, let's get out of F5 mode. Up there in that area is where I think I'm going to put one of the first things. And I'll, I'll do something in the hillside uh, to give me a little sign or something like that for mini golf to show people where it's at. Um, but let's see. But I'd like to build like a mini golf course. Uh, if that's even a thing, <laughs> I guess that's what they call it, a uh, mini golf course or putt-putt golf course. But I was playing around with, on my Patreon server with a few of the guys last night and kind of uh, going over a few ideas that you can make it hard to get, um, to get you know, the, the ball in the hole, so to speak. So it should be pretty interesting. Mind the ridiculously loud airplane where I'm at, too. So let's get up here and see exactly where I'm, I have put this thing I want to say that right up here is where I have the first setup and I have well I didn't even put it together yet but it's basically in view of like uh, XB's house and stuff over here in the bridge it's I took a little flat area here and this is going to be one of the holes I don't know if it's going to be the first one or whatever but I'd like to demonstrate some um, what it's going to look like at least and it's going to be in view of uh, of Biffa's museum here and the rest of Hermit Thrill so maybe a big sign up here and kind of like a walkway going up here because it's a little bit too steep of an incline to do anything but I might do some mini holes on the way up here so I don't know if this is going to be the first area or not but I have to pick a place to start so this seems like uh, good a place as any to do it I just cleared out a little area here and what we need to do is the de de devise a way to make this good so i've gotten a lot of packed ice i went to the the ice biome there and got a lot of packed ice and i think what i'm gonna do is clear out a little bit of this stone and we're gonna make it on ground level here and i'm gonna surround it with oak wood just to give each area its own little thing you know that because you kind of need some bumpers in putt putt golf there will be like some hazards and things like that so that it actually um it actually you know you have to aim and 
and you'll be penalized or whatever and try to make these crazy shots uh, when you do fall into a hazard or whatever but you can implement redstone to stop the ball from moving and uh, you can do all of this with packed ice and you can actually put carpet on top of it so as soon as I place this let's see I've got a couple materials set aside here let's go ahead and grab some dirt and that way we can, um, well, we might as well put this stone up too because I'm not going to need that for a little while. Let's go ahead and seal this up. And what we'll do is we'll make our first hole, um, well, this hole, <laughs> I won't call it the first because it may not be the first hole, but we'll do our hole that we're working on right here. Relatively simple. I'd like it to do one bend and I'd like a little redstone deal just to show off what it can be. And then I'm going to talk with the other guys I guess there's a planning committee for this uh, this area, namely uh, Tango, Impulse, and Asuma, I think, or probably the people to talk to. Mostly probably Tango, though. Uh, do I have any dirt left? Man, I already used almost all that dirt. That is crazy. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to going to have to fix this up. Okay, so let's say it's going to be a bend. We'll start it coming from here. Actually, I guess I should have. Let me knock this dirt off and get a little bit there. I'm sorry, too much prep time. Now that I'm really thinking about where I want stuff to go, it's a little bit different. A um, couple more pieces of dirt. Oh, look, I'm tearing up the landscape now. This should be good. All right, <laughs> we'll start it right here. Very good. I'll just put um, my last piece somewhere over here. All right. So what I want to do is have it go like right here and it's going to bend around left. That way we can actually start heading toward this area. And when we get to this area right here, we can bend left a little bit more and we can go towards this hillside and back around here. And I'll just make some different structures to kind of separate it and stuff like that. But basically when it, we want to utilize the terrain as much as possible here. So let's do this area as the T point. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a few of these and we're going to make some slabs. That is how we're going to do that. Let's do some oak wood slabs. And I chose oak because it's it's it looks very very natural when it comes to outdoorsy builds type stuff. Uh, we're also going to need some lime wool, uh, some lime wool for carpet, and we're going to need some green wool as well. And that's mostly what we're going to be using here. So let's grab some packed ice, and we can put Dana aside for now, and we'll go with that. Okay. So the T area here is going to be. Let's see. We can do one two three just like that I guess I could have done that with regular dirt actually or we'll use stone for this case just because dirt seems to be in short supply right now <laughs> all right so we've got this little area right here and we'll surround that in these slabs I'm going to have to make well that's not quite enough here let's get one more one more shot here there we go I don't want it to be too tight you know all right okay so this will be the starting area let's go ahead and surround this and there we go and the starting area and what we'll do is have it'll be a white spot I think that we'll do for the T or I think we'll just go around with regular green is probably the best place to do it just like this the lime green and that way yeah and this will be the area and this will be the tea box okay and basically what we'll do is we'll stop it right there so you'll have to say anywhere in the tea box you'll be able to shoot to get different distances and heights and stuff and then we'll make it go this way and we'll go out, I guess, let's go five and let's do a bend right here. So we'll do the bend right here. All right, this looks, this looks like the pretty good beginning of what we want here. So 
what I need to do is measure this out in ice and you got to kind of try it as you go. Now packed ice doesn't melt so we don't need to worry about that and as you can see it's very slippery. <laughs> um, oh, but you have to use silk touch on it so you don't break it. All right. So if we did this area right here, let's see. Let us put a few blocks right here. Now let me make sure that I can't possibly get the, well, we'll use an Ender Pearl. I plan on using snowballs and clay just to separate the different kind of balls. There'll be a few things for people to use, but that's so you don't get the, uh, the places confused. Okay, so we'll do, let's try an Ender Pearl right here and we can't go okay that's what I was that's what I was hoping you cannot possibly get it at the other bin so it needs to be long enough for that now if I shoot it just like this it'll probably slide almost all the way to the wood there and that looks that looks pretty good right there so you would come from here and you can also shoot it this way and what we'll do is we'll have the course do this here And we need to make like a little hazard, I think. So what we'll do is probably some stairs. Now it's gonna be kind of hard to do this with with carpet, I think. Some areas we won't be able to do with carpet due to the fact that we want it to be able to go through. So they'll just be ice areas here. I should have brought my bed. You know what, in fact, I can make a bed. That isn't a problem. Uh, let's see here, we'll do, we'll do a lime green bed. And well, I need wood first. Let's do that because this is ridiculously dark to work at night. All right, sleep. <laughs> awesome. All right, come on, baby. Let's do it. Wake up. All right, <laughs> now let's take the remainder of the green wood, I mean, the green wool or the green carpet and cover this up and then we'll add because the actual the projectiles actually slide on this too you guys so it's pretty cool let's go ahead and surround this and here is where it's going to be here's where we're going to need to get the um the ball so i need to make I need to make tripwire hooks. Let's get some iron and some string. And I've already got wood. And we're also going to need a hopper for the actual um, for the actual mechanism here, or or where we'd get it out of. Okay, so we'll grab a little bit of iron here, and let's just make a hopper. And this will be the first hole. Where is my chest? There we go. Boom, hopper. Okay, so the hopper can be like right here. And then we'll do the ice around it. And there we go. Now, we'll finish this off with the oak wood slabs like so. And a lot of these are gonna, I'm gonna implement some hazards and things of that nature. And really and truly, instead of having this area here, well, that would, you would be able to tell if you would go past it because it is. So that might work out. I was thinking about maybe something else. Maybe I could put some other sort of block right here. Maybe some white uh, would probably be the best way here. But let's go ahead and finish covering this up with green wool or green carpet, I should say. And do I have any of that left? Wow, this is going to take some serious wool, this project. <laughs> All right, got plenty of green carpet now. And we'll save that for this area here. Okay, so ideally, oh, I see you. I see you. You're not blowing up my stuff. I'm gonna have to light this area up big time. Okay. So ideally what we do is we would toss the ball here so you can toss it any kind of way jumping or whatever and it goes over here and your second shot the best bet would be to just be right here as soon as you pick it up you drop it in again and let's see if it hits the hopper yep it sure does so when you go to it bam 
Now, we need to add a little bit of challenge to this because that was relatively easy, I think. So the best thing that we can do to add a little challenge, because this is going to be a part two, I'm going to call it. Uh, what we can do here is instead of this, we can add two simple blocks like this and we can add some tripwire hooks. And let's see how this works. So we'll take iron, a stick, and a piece of wood, and I think that is the tripwire hook. Yeah, just like that. All right, so if we took the tripwire hooks, we can't add them with this here. So this would need to be an open spot, unfortunately. And we could do this, and we can place the string here. And now, let's see, will it trigger? And it continues to go, I think, or does it stop? Let's try, oh, actually, let's see if we can do it. No, it does stop. Hmm, that's something I did not think about. Um, okay, so we can't do that. Let me rethink this. All right, you guys, instead of the tripwire setup, I decided just to make something a little simple with the dog leg, and this is just good for my first one. I'd actually like to rig up some elaborate type stuff, but I changed a little bit of my materials up as well. I decided to go with the lime green and the regular green wool for kind of like the striped effect and uh, kind of like a, what a fairway would look like. And I thought it looked pretty cool, even though most mini golf courses that I've seen are green. Uh, this has a pretty uh, neat effect, so I like it. And I've separated this with white instead of the... Uh, the border material that just seemed it now I've, you, I'm using this granite as like the T area because I just thought the wool the wood in the middle was kind of an eyesore and it's not as pretty with just the uh, with the stripes like this but it's a little bit more effective so anyway what I'll do is I'll show you guys the part so this is still going to be a part two and you can shoot from anywhere and the object here is to get it into that hole now this is probably one of the better shots because if it goes too far over this actually prevents it from going in, and if it goes too far that away, uh, you really don't have an angle, and you would have to make a third shot. So if I get here, now I have to get in the actual course here, and I gotta aim straight to it. Let's go ahead and tilt up, and it looks like oh we sunk it <laughs> so pretty good there I could make it one more at the end to make it a little bit more challenging and that's one of the things I think I'm gonna do here so let's go ahead and grab this and I'll make it at the very end that way that way it'll be just that little bit harder to make it and I think I'm gonna like that all right let's grab the hopper now <laughs> I gotta put some of this stuff up man all right hoppers right here and there we go cool perfect <laughs> so i think what will happen is the hopper will go in the chest or something like that um I, th I wish i could make it light up with redstone but i'm not too sure how maybe it would actually activate the hopper if i put a comparator on it for like um a light but i'm not gonna get into that i'm gonna figure that out another time i'd like to do one more section for the course uh, for now and I'd like to do a bunch of holes naturally, but this will be over the course of a few different episodes So let's see where we can go next if we take it this away. I don't think that would be a good way I think the next possible place would probably be here and it looks like we can clear out a little bit of this stuff and maybe start this away all right, guys, I got a little bit of the land terraform there so I could start my next little track, and I decided I'd do a sand trap for this one. So this one I placed a couple high, and it's just a wood barrier right here, and something that one of my patrons last night showed me, Hammer, is that when you, there's a little bug, if you put something directly on stairs, it kind of just slides down. So this makes a perfect little deal for this area right here. Now, I'll take a, let's see, let's use something proper here. I did bring some clay over. Um, so let's use that. Well, I'll just use in their balls for now. Okay, so if you if you can possibly make this shot But it's pretty hard, but if you just Shoot it like that it'll land straight in the sand trap if you shoot it with a little angle It can make it over if you don't get just the right height on it Let's see. I'll shoot it like that. and You see how it just bounces in there? <laughs> so it's a cool little sand trap. I thought about making a little bit further, but it is a little too hard to do that. Like the furthest you can go, if I, 
if I if I hold run and wait let's see here if I try to run jump and Q at the same time you see <laughs> I just I, I end up jumping off the edge and it's a little bit too hard to do that so um, yeah, that's about the furthest. Well, that's not the furthest, but you see what I mean. It's a sand trap either or so that would take one shot away. Um, but if we got it on the ice here and let's let's stretch out a little bit of ice and see what kind of shot we can make with this. If we stretch out a little bit of ice. Uh, actually, it only needs to be right there. Let's see how far can we go with this? We'll go four before we make another obstacle or something. And let's fill this in with the packed ice and see if we can get some. I don't know what's going on with my USB devices here. We'll see if we can get some traction from up here. So let's go ahead and cue that. And that missed. If we go a little bit further and jump. Aha! It got out. So it does make it down the course, and that's what we want. We want something a little iffy. Okay, now I was thinking earlier about doing some redstone stuff, like uh, maybe with some pistons or something like that, but I think I'm going to avoid that until I get like something a little, uh, a little bit bigger. Remember like the clown heads and stuff like that? That can stop it like a mouth opening and closing, kind of like the mumbo head? I think that would be cool to do like a little Zuljan head like that with the mouth opening and closing to stop the ball from actually going through. Um, and that'll be powered with a, a, a string or something of that nature. I'll see how to do that. I'm not too sure. I have to play around with that design to figure it out. But what we need here is something to probably hook around and we'll need a little bit of a little wall to separate this and probably a glass wall and the T will end up right here and we'll probably go up from there. So how can I do this? If I did, let's see here. We'll make it hook around. We'll actually make it go a little bit. Mm, I don't know. I think this might be this might be enough and we can actually start our next tee box right there and make it hook around. I want this to be kind of symmetrical, like I want it to be free flowing, like from the, from the start of this, from the end of this one, you can just go right to the next box and start the next hole. And that's what I'm hoping for anyway. So maybe this should just be a little straight there. And I think this is enough obstacle right here with the little sand trap. So let's go ahead and mark out. We'll put the whole, hmm. Maybe we should put the hole by itself, like next to rough. I think that might be it. That way we'd have to hit it on center and that would add another level of difficulty. So let's go ahead and grab this ice here and we'll put the next hopper. Do I have another hopper made? No, let's make one right quick. Um, chest and iron. I already have iron, do I not? Nope, I'll just make some right here. And we'll just make another one right there quick. Alright. Now that we got our second hopper, that's our next hole. And we'll put it right there. Mm-hmm. And now we'll take some slabs. Which, man, I wish I would get all this prepared beforehand, but it just takes up too much inventory space, you know what I mean? There we go. Now we got 30 slabs to kind of work around. That should be enough. I'm hoping at least. So we'll just surround this. And instead of... There we go. And that way you'll have to get it in the middle if you want it to go in at all. Alright, that's like perfect right there, man. So, instead, you have to get it, shoot it down the middle to get it. Maybe we should get it... Maybe we should put it on the left instead. I think that might be a better a better thing here. Let's do it from right here. So we'll do the hopper on the left side. Uh, did I grab it? No. We'll do the hopper here instead. And we'll do the... Let's get... Uh, actually, we should put... Oh, we should just make that a brick, actually. Oh, <laughs> that's not what I wanted to do. All right. Now, there we go. So we won't be able to get it just straight from there. We actually have to kind of aim it this way and that will change the, the 
That will actually make it harder to get it over the sand trap. So let's try it. Let's see if we can do it in one shot. Negative. <laughs> All right. Let's get a little bit closer. This has to be the furthest it goes. Actually, we might have to make this to where... God, it's going to stink because... I'd really like to do half slabs right there. I mean, I really wouldn't like to do half slabs right there, but you really can't tell where the border is. Yeah, you see, like, that's too far, so you can't shoot from there. So this has to be the closest that you get. So if we shoot from there... Uh, I didn't make it. Okay, let's try just down the center here. Um, let's try it right there. No. This might be a little too hard now. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right that made it but barely man let's see can we shoot straight no it has to go about as far as possible there so I guess we can call this a part two because this is actually a really really hard shot to make what happens if I aim it up like that oh it doesn't even come close to that let's take a few of these just in case they're stacking and see what we can do It might be a little bit too hard. Nope, it isn't. That's like, that's like the perfect shot, man. So this can be a part two. So I can consider both of these part two. Now let's see how I'm gonna make these signs. The best thing to do probably, I would, I would really love it to see if banners would be the thing, but let's cover this up right quick and I'll do it with both style of carpets like I did last time. So we'll start it off. Hey Tango. We'll start it off like this, and then we'll go with the dark green, then the light green again, <laughs> then the dark green again, and we'll just fairway it up. Let's see here. Nice, okay. Got the course set out, and I think what I'll do is, let's see. I wish there was some way to mark where the, the hole was. That would be a little bit easier. Um, I think I might do something to highlight that with a light sooner or later, but I'll have to work that off camera. And as far as the rest of the things go, we'll have to do like, we'll have to make signs. So I'll put signs like here and I'll put signs, I guess it'll be just like that. And we'll go ahead and come across with, we're not gonna do the white like I thought we would. Uh, let's make, some more slabs. I think I am going to change the color of the slab though. Maybe it will have to be quartz, I don't know. I wanted to make sure that you don't get any idea, it, it, that you always know if you're going in the wrong end, you know what I mean? Uh, that's on the right side, that, yeah, that should be good. Okay, let's make a few signs now. Uh, we do have some sticks already, I believe. Uh, yes, I did bring some sticks. And let's get enough to make signs. So we signs, and let's make a couple of them. We're gonna use some trap doors and stuff like that too. It's gonna be a really, really fun project. Okay, so we'll do the first one. Um, I'll call it hole two, and just for now, and we'll call it part two. Part two. And um, actually I should name it, shouldn't I? So let's see, I'll call it Sandy. I'll give it a bunch of names <laughs> like that. Sandy. Oh, let's actually put the number on it too. So number two, Sandy. And, oh wait, <laughs> I'm so bad at signs. Number two, Sandy, part two. There we go. And this is number one, what can I call this? This will be number one dog leg. <laughs> number one dog leg. And part two. There we go. So two part twos to start it off. I think that is going to work out for a good little project, you guys. And I'm going to continue playing around with this off camera. But I do need to do my Patreon banners for the day. So I'm going to head down there and do the Patreon banners for you guys. All right, guys, I have the banner designs ready to go. And today we're doing Wessikens, Ulteria, and Severus. So 
Uh, the first thing that we need, I've got it all organized. <laughs> Look at me go. Okay, we'll need a black banner here and red at the top. All right, so that gives us the first corner. And then we're going to have to do an oxy daisy right underneath. Like, oh wait, oxy daisy. There we go. And that gives us, what exactly does that do? Maybe I'm not seeing that correct or something? It looks like there's an oxy daisy. Okay, we'll go from there. So next is a red dye and a golden apple. And that gives us that. And then we have a vine right on top, just like that. And then we have a gradient. And yep, that definitely looks like Wessie's banner. <laughs> okay, very cool. And we'll show those off in just a second. I'm gonna do the second one right here. The next one we'll need is for Ulteria and it starts off with a white banner with um, a ton of ink in this one. Um, there we go. And then the next one is just at the bottom like this. All right. So this turns the banner black altogether. I wonder if there was a method behind the madness there instead of just creating a black banner. I'm not sure, but I'll keep the design as written. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a rose red here. And that is going to give us the red circle in the middle. Then we'll do what uh, it looks like a cross pattern, just like this. There we go. And then we have a black cross like that and a vine that is in it just to give it the border. And it looks like that is going to be it. Uh, let me put that next spot. Okay, I'm pretty sure I got that right. I hope so. If you guys see any, um, the patrons that I'm doing this for, if you guys see any problems with it, just let me know. Uh, the next one is for Severus, and we have uh, starting with a red banner, and then we're gonna put five ink, like so. There we go, that's the red X, or the black X, I should say. Then we put a vine on top of that, and that gives us that pattern. Then we're gonna put this in the middle and give a black just set up like that. I don't wanna get confused here. Black set up like that, then one at the bottom, naturally. And right after that, we have to go with an oxy daisy and bone meal. So the bone meal right there, and the, I think that's how it goes, is it? The bone meal right there and the oxidaisy below. Just like that, and that makes it red, and then, or white, and then we do the oxidaisy below, and it turns it to black. There we go, so that's the three banners. Uh, let's go ahead and move Dana just for a second here. Oh, I mixed those up. All right. All black and red today. <laughs> Everybody must have got together to do banners together like that. All right. So the first one is Wessie, and I've got his sign up right here. Uh, oh no, we're going to have to move those. I thought the banners were going to be a little bit higher. Someone had said a while back that I might need to shift the banners up by one so that it's not so low to the stair like the few first ones were, and I think uh, they're correct in that. I might have to move a little bit of them up that I'll do off camera. So let's see, Wessikins is gonna be here. Oh no, wait, god dog it. Wessikins. There we go, and Bam, now we have Wessie's banner right there. This is two, so that'll work for now, but I think I'm just gonna start it on that next uh, that next portion right there, just because it's a little bit better, I think. Ulteria, and Ulteria's banner is gonna be the black cross. Very cool. And last but not least, uh, Severus, which is going to have a half space, so that should work, I think. Yep, half space up. That'll work. So Severus, Ulteria, and Wessikins. Thank you guys so, so, so much. Thank y'all so much for the submissions and the banners and all the Patreon support that you guys give me every month. I really appreciate each and every one of you guys. If y'all are curious about uh, Patreon, I basically have a Patreon page set up. Any kind of donation will get your banner in the tower here. I do three of them every single player type episode I do on Hermitcraft and um, I try to incorporate all the designs. For those of you that are thinking about posting your banner design, please look for the forum thread that I have inside my Patreon 
on posts. There's already an existing thread there. It helps me stay organized, so post it underneath there so um, it just doesn't clutter up the page and we can all know who placed when so I can stay in order. But that's going to be about it. I guess that is it. Dana, can you wrap this up for us? Okay, guys. That's going to be it for today. If you like the video, please hit the like button for us and if you're new to the channel you can subscribe for more. Thank you all so much for watching and as always this is Dana and Zuljan signing off. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye guys.